vision, um, yeah, having striving for something that doesn't yet exist um, at a personal or at a collective level. So, are you ambitious? Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't necessarily or regularly think of myself as ambitious, and, and in our culture, it's probably not something that people celebrate. So, therefore, I probably wouldn't tell people that I'm an ambitious sort of person but when I think about it and I sort of put it in a positive light of um, yeah sort of imagining the world into being the way that I'd like it to be then I'm ambitious in that sense. Yeah. And what you're doing here with Hikarangi seems pretty ambitious for your community. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I acknowledge that <laughs> I often um, feel like it is yeah, um, sometimes overly ambitious, but most of the time, yeah, sort of it's a good, good level of ambition, um, again, to kind of create something that doesn't yet exist, but that collectively we can imagine into being. Yeah. Where do you think that urge comes from? Um, for myself or the yeah the, for yourself initially at least uh, I've, since my late teens I've probably um, yeah had a, a tendency to be dissatisfied with the way things are and to believe that I can influence the world around me to be different um, and when I think about what was happening for me at that time you know there was I had a religious conversion experience that was quite profound in the way that I saw the world and things and I think that um, it was quite an evangelical Christian sort of experience and, and, and that has this sort of yeah the sort of um, a drive to you know mission and sort of convert is probably the the old way of seeing it but sort of certainly that remember reading theology and they talked about the prophetic imagination and I think that's sort of um, believing the world to not be the way that it could be and that it's got potential to be better and that I've, part of my time on earth is about contributing to that um, albeit in a really flawed um, flawed way so yeah that's probably where that comes from um, and that's f sort of flowed over into yeah lots of different aspects but it's kind of provided a drive for me that meant I haven't really had a, a focus on career and job it's been more like I've got a purpose in the world to like a mission do, almost yeah. Yeah. to do something I'm here for a time and I'm not quite sure what exactly that is but I've got the sort of self-belief that I can do things and I'll do my best to to make it happen um, yeah and like I say I often make lots of mistakes and never quite goes to plan um, so yeah it's probably where that comes from mostly I think. Um, yeah. Again, I haven't had a sort of a set goal in life that that's what I'm working towards. It's just whatever context I find myself in. So we're here in this community, and what have I got to contribute, and what can make the lives of people here or the environment better or whatever. And, and so then I can imagine something that could happen and be ambitious and a bit audacious about that and have a goal to, to achieve and find people that like that goal as well and we work together towards trying to make something like that happen and yeah. Can you describe for me the most ambitious person that you know? Mm, probably my wife. <laughs> her, her mission in life largely is apart from being a great mother and partner and things um, she's very focused on uh, revitalizing te reo and tikanga and, and sort of feels a 
deep sense of responsibility to regenerate um, cultural sort of um, uh, taonga and, and treasures and ways of being in the world that her grandparents were sort of um, for her the last people that she's sort of or no, ones that she's known came from a world that's now gone but she feels like they passed on to her some responsibility for maintaining and growing and regenerating those things and so she's very focused on, on that um, which influences why we live here and um, why she works in the place she does in, in Māori immersion education and why she's at Tangi and we live on the marae, um, those sort of things. So, yeah, she's she's very ambitious to hold on to and revitalise those cultural uh, treasures that um, are at great risk of being lost as the world homogenises and we, we um, you know, still dealing with the legacy of colonisation and things, but um, that the, the global pressures on, on our community as much as anywhere mean that many of those ways of being um, are, are being lost, let alone the language and things. So, yeah, she's probably the most ambitious person I can think of. Is there anything that would enable you to be more ambitious? Um, um, I guess... If it was something that we talked about more, it might be something that I was more purposeful about and focused on. I mean, again, it's not something that <laughs> comes up in conversation very often or that we're encouraged to, to think about. Um, and I think ambition isn't always a good thing, you know. Hitler was ambitious uh, and, and succeeded in many of his ambitions, um, so in and of itself it, it's not necessarily something that I would want to, to be, that the ambition needs to be based on values that uh, you know, we think are good values and important, so if it's that kind of ambition then yeah, but, you know, but there's other, ego is tied up with ambition and, and I've experienced unhealthy um, situations for myself and, and for others where that, that sort of ambition gets in the way of the quality of relationships and, um, and just being a good person to others when that ambition overrides yeah, what, what should be more important. Mm.